Say what you will about the French, but they were right about one thing. The guillotine is broken. Who would have known that executing all of your problems would be the best way to solve things? If you've ever hopped over to one of my streams, Twitch TV slash RD Thursday, I swear we're gonna be there soon. Trademark. You'll know that I have a very, very simple rule when it comes to looping the game. If I want to loop in Risk of Rain 2, I'm always gonna have to have a guillotine. There are, of course, some exceptions to the rule. When I don't get a guillotine, I have to loop until I get a guillotine, just out of pure rage. But for the most part, my rule is guillotine equal loop, no guillotine equal no loop. Some of you might be wondering why this is. Why is it that I will loop if I have a guillotine, but not loop if I don't have a guillotine? The answer is pretty simple. It has to do with the director in the game and these cheeky little bastards called elites. Now, starting with the director, there's really a whole lot going on behind the scenes. I'm not going to explain everything that goes on behind there. That's a little too over my head, okay? Think about it. You're dealing with numbers all day long. Mm -hmm. Decimal points, high frequencies, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Fucking digits. <laughs> all very acidic, above the shoulders, mustard shit. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It kind of can wake some people out. Mm -hmm. If you want the numbers, graphs, in-depth look, I recommend you check out Why is Stage 5 Harder? It's a video by Wooly. You can go check it out. It's going to go into way more depth than what I'm about to breach into right here. All right, so the only thing you really need to know about the director is that it's kind of a dick the later it goes on. For the first three stages, you're going to think you're in an A24 film. It's nice, calm, everything's going well. And then once you hit Stage 5, you're going to realize, oh shit, it's a Michael Bay movie. The director gets a set of credits that it's allowed to use to spend on monster spawns, which increases with both time and the amount of players in the game. The director gets a base amount of credits on each map, so for the starter map, stage 1 through 3, it's going to be lower, but once it gets to 4 to 5, the base credit starts to ramp up dramatically. And by dramatically, I mean literally dramatically. It doubles from 3 to 4, and then from 4 to 5, it's like a 70% increase. Or to put it more simply, once you reach stage 5, the amount of credits that the director has to spawn enemies is triple what it was on stage 1. And that's without even factoring any time or players. So even if you were to rush all the way to stage 5, minute 1, somehow you manage some miraculous miracle of dream luck, and you're able to get to stage 5, minute 1, it's still going to be extremely difficult. And if you've played the game before, I'm sure you've noticed that some elites only spawn after a certain stage. This isn't really a time thing, it's actually based on how the director works these elites into the game. Malachite and Celestine enemies cannot spawn until stage 5, so you won't even find these enemies until you're actually on Sky Meadows. But then immediately after Sky Meadows, the director is allowed to spawn as many Malachites and Celestine as it needs, at least to fill its credit limit. And that's all we're going to talk about the director, because that's really all you need to know. Once you hit stage 5, everything ramps up super effing hard. And the elite types are now unlocked, so the director can throw as many of those as it wants at you. Now let's talk about elites, and why they are kind of dicks. Elite monsters are literally just the same as their other variants, but they have values that are multiplied by a certain amount. This means that they're not going to have some super secret special attack that you have to dodge or avoid or be wary of. It's just going to be that they have attributes like a blazing elite is going to be able to set you on fire and their health and damage is increased. Getting the values from the wiki page, you can see that the tier 1 elites, quote, uh, these are the blazing, glacial, and overloading. The HP multiplier and the damage multiplier respectively are 4 and 2. Tier 2 enemies have 18 and 6 for HP and damage respectively. So for example, to make this a little bit clearer for you, if you ran into a beetle and it was a tier 1 elite, it would have 4 times the HP and twice the damage. If it was a tier 2 elite, it would have 18 times the HP and 6 times the damage. To make it even clearer, if it was a blazing elite, it would have 4 times the HP and 2 times the damage. And if it was a Molokai, it would have 18 times the HP, 6 times the damage. I don't think the examples can get any simpler than that. Also, note to wiki people, I don't know if you're listening, hi there if you are, 
Can you please put the information about the elite uh, HP increases and damage increases on the elite section on the monster page? The only place I could find the information was on the director page, which I don't think is incredibly apparent to the people who are going to be searching for it, especially since the director page is so long and it was in a table that was collapsed, so it's even harder to find. I can't just control F look for it. And I'm pretty sure when you look at it on Google, it's not going to show up, but I, I don't know. I think it would just be kind of helpful and I uh, would appreciate if anyone changed that for newer players that may look at the wiki. I do it myself, but I've never uh, changed a wiki before. I don't want to mess anything up and also Wooly started the war of the wiki, so uh, I don't want to add to that either. In any case, that's all you really need to know about the director and the elites to know why the guillotine is so bu -bu 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 busted. Yeah, you probably forgot this video was on the guillotine with how much we've been talking about the other shit. But yeah, let's bring it back and talk about the guillotine, the elite item that I think is one of the best items in the game and is basically mandatory if you want to loop. A lot. So the guillotine, for those of you who don't know or don't have it unlocked, is an item that will instantly kill an elite enemy that falls below a 13% threshold. This increases 13% per stack, but because the stacking is hyperbolic, it's actually not 13% per stack, you're not going to stack like 10 and have a 130% threshold, that's not how that works. And in all actuality, the first stack isn't even 13%, it starts out at 11.5% which used to be more before they nerfed Elite, so they had to nerf the guillotine so the guillotine wouldn't be so strong. This was back in 1.0 update, so yeah, lots changed. Also, apparently the overloading Elites have somewhat of an advantage over the other Elites when it comes to getting killed by the guillotine. The execution threshold only triggers on health, not shields, and because overloading enemies get 50% of their HP turned into shields, you actually have to go down to the 50% threshold, even if you had like 99% execution. This rule is not in place for perfected elite, so I guess they really aren't the perfect beings, are they? Mm. And I don't mean to say that the guillotine's only good because it kills elite enemies, although that is literally its only function, it's not the only reason it's good. It has lots of synergy with other items, brain socks anyone, and is technically more efficient damage-wise than a lot of other items out there. Using what we know about the elites now, that their HP is multiplied by quite a bit, an HP multiplier for a tier 1, which is blazing, glacial, or overloading, is 4 times, meanwhile the stage, or sorry, tier 2, have their HP multiplied by 18, these are the Molochites and RL Celestine, so I don't mean to go all Stephen Hawking on you right now, but let's do some math. If a beetle has 100 HP, and then it gets turned into a tier 1 elite, so it's a blazing elite, let's say, it has its HP multiplied by 4, so it's now at 400 HP. With just one guillotine, we have 11.5% execution threshold for this beetle. That means there is 46 damage that we don't have to do to this beetle, so therefore let's just say that the amount of damage that the guillotine gave us is 46 for this elite enemy. This means that any items that would give you less than 46 damage against this beetle would be less efficient than just picking up a guillotine. Now 46 damage does not sound like a lot of damage, but 400 HP beetle is not a very high HP beetle either, so the number is going to be pretty low because the HP is pretty low. If we're instead talking about a 40,000 HP boss, an elite enemy boss, we're looking at 4600 damage that we don't have to do to that enemy because we have a guillotine, just one guillotine. How many items in the game can give you 4,600 damage? Not a whole lot. Let's look at one of my favorite items in the game, the ATG, and let's say that the bandit, someone who can do 600% damage with his special, Desperado or Lights Out, doesn't matter, although Desperado can stack and do more damage, but let's just say that it's 600% damage. Also, let's say that the bandit's level 20 because we're going to be later in the game. I don't really pay attention to my levels that much, so I'm not sure what would be the appropriate level, but leveling in Risk of Rain 2 isn't that important anyway, so let's just use level 20 as a baseline. A bandit would have 60 damage with no shape glass or any damage increasing item. So let's start piecing together all of this. First, we have the 60 damage. We multiply that by 600% because that's the Desperado we're going to be using. Then we multiply that number by 300%. So, some pretty simple math here, just gonna pull up a calculator. We have 60 damage, we multiply that by 600% or just 6 times. That gives us the bold number 360. Then we multiply that 360, because we proc the ATG, by 300%, or 3 times. That gives us a whopping 1080 damage. 
To get the same result as one single guillotine, we would have to proc the ATG with our Desperado. Remember, it has to be with the Desperado or else the damage won't be nearly as much. We have to proc the ATG five times. That our guillotine, one guillotine, gave us 4600 damage that we don't have to do to this enemy. To get the same result, 4600 damage, from our ATG, we would have to proc the ATG with the Lights Out or Desperado 25 times, actually 26 times, but whatever, 25 times. Meanwhile, the Chad Guillotine doesn't have to do anything. You literally don't have to do anything, it just provides the damage for you. And unlike the ATG, when the enemy's HP goes up, so does the damage that the Guillotine provides, because it's a percent-based execution threshold. So while your other items might be stuck trying to scale up with the enemies in the game, which is pretty difficult, the enemies scale pretty quickly, and if you don't get lucky, get the right items, you're not gonna be able to scale your items. You might not see another ATG for another like 10 stages. In that case, you're gonna be kinda screwed because all the enemies have already increased their HP by like tenfold. So now your guillotine is doing 46,000 damage that you don't have to deal. Your ATG is still doing that 180. But now you're going to have to proc 255 times on your Lights Out or Desperado for you to get the same amount of damage from a single guillotine. And this is coming from someone who loves the ATG, and the ATG is one of the best damage items in the game. It's just that when it comes to damage items, you really can't compare to something that's percent HP based, especially in a game that constantly scales up. And that's really all there is to it. That's basically why I think the old guillotine is the best thing to do when you're going to loot. If you don't have it, you're going to be gimped in more ways than one. And I know people always complain when you compare items to other things in Risk of Rain 2, saying something along the lines of, LOL, why does it matter? We don't get to choose our items. But a lot of the time you do. In every stage 4, you have multi-shops that are always going to be uncommon items, which means there's always going to be a chance for a guillotine to be in one of those shops. Also, with 3D printers being a little bit more pervasive now, you can actively choose whether or not to turn in your other green items for something like a guillotine. Or you could even go to the Lunar Portal and trade in your other items for a guillotine. Three white items for a guillotine is usually going to be a pretty good trade. That is, of course, if you're looping. If you're not looping, you can basically disregard this video. If you've never went past stage 5, it doesn't really matter if you get an old guillotine or not. If your only goal in life is to kill Mithrix, it's probably not the best idea to look for guillotines or trade other items for guillotines because once you get to Mithrix, it's not really going to be useful. That being said, if you do loop and you do plan on going to Mithrix after the loop, it is still pretty useful to get the guillotine because the perfected enemies are extremely tough and they're shielded. Shielded enemies are pains in the butt. Unlike other enemies, shielded enemies, if you don't hit them for a while, recharge all of their HP all the way up. Which means, if you get too low and you have to back off from shooting, those enemies are going to go all the way to full HP and you have to restart it again. And in a game where time means increased difficulty, it is better to kill your enemies quickly than it is to let them recharge and start shooting you again. Also, my final note on all of this, Scavengers can also be elite, which means you can actually execute Scavengers, which is a blessing because Scavengers are terrible for a late run. The amount of times I've been completely scammed by a Scavenger shooting me with an equipment or some other form of BS, like a Nukahana's proc randomly, it's, it's innumerable. The amount of times they've just ended my god runs is crazy. Being able to execute their big tanky asses with a guillotine is gonna be great. Anyway, that's that's it. That's the video. Um, pick up your guillotine if you want to loop. Drop your guillotine if you don't want to loop, okay? Also, if you made it this far, like the video or subscribe. It doesn't really matter what you do. I won't know. Hope everyone has a good day and uh, see you later.